Hello everyone. Let me first thank the organizers for having me here. It's an absolute pleasure to give this presentation. So the aim of my talk is to show novel approaches to reconstruct 3D atomic structures through dose-efficient fusion of imaging and analytical techniques in quantitative scanning transmission electron microscopy. To extract 3D atomic models, we make use of a quantitative model-based approach, of which some of the possibilities are summarized here. Using electron tomography, atomic scale defects can be revealed in three dimensions. The number of atoms contained in an atomic column can be counted along the viewing direction with single atom sensitivity for homogeneous particles. We are also making progress to count atoms for heterogeneous particles containing more than one atom type. And atom counting, in combination with structural relaxation, enables us to retrieve the 3D atomic structure from a single viewing direction. And this requires a lower electron dose as compared to the use of a conventional tomography series. This method shows um, great promise when investigating 3D structural changes, for example, under the flow of a gas or as a function of temperature. And I will come back to these and other examples later in this presentation. I will first um, explain how we count the number of atoms along the viewing direction and how we add confidence levels to the results we obtain. Then I will come to recent progress to extend the method um, to materials consisting of more than one atom type. And next we will see how atom counts can be um, used to extract the 3D atomic structure. And finally, I will introduce a method to track 3D structural changes um, over time using a so-called hidden Markov model. So we make use of scanning transmission electron microscopy and in a quantitative framework, the aim is to extract precise numbers for the unknown structure parameters, including the atom position, the atom types and the number of atoms from the experimental images. And therefore, we make use of statistical parameter estimation theory. Now, the concept of statistical parameter estimation theory is the use of a parametric model um, which is able to describe the underlying image intensities. Since our images are peaked at the atomic column positions, um, each intensity peak can be modeled as a Gaussian function of which we need to estimate the height, the width and the position. Now, the estimated parameters correspond to the model best matching the underlying observations. The estimated positions result in quantitative measurements for the atomic column positions, and based on the height and width, the volume under each Gaussian function can be estimated. And this is um, the so-called scattering cross-section, um, which for stem imaging is very sensitive to the atom type and to the number of atoms in a column. Now, in mathematical terms, this procedure can be summarized as follows. So the experimental image pixel values are described by a sum of Gaussians. The unknown parameters of this model are estimated by minimizing the least square sum. And this optimization involves an iterative refinement in a huge dimensional parameter space. This algorithm takes overlap between neighboring um, columns into account, and this is particularly important uh, for closely separated atomic columns. Now, if we look at the parametric model in more details, then we can conclude that the total number of Gaussians written by this capital um, number n um, is assumed to be known. However, as illustrated by this experimental image of graphene, we can clearly see that we do not always have this prior knowledge. And a possible solution is to fit models with increasing number of um, atomic column positions or with increasing number of carbon atoms in this example. And you can see that the fit with the underlying data 
um, will improve, but a visual interpretation becomes very subjective. And if we keep adding peaks, then at some point um, there will be overfitting. Now, to select the most likely atomic structure, we introduce the so-called maximum a posteriori probability rule, or a map in short. And with this map rule, we can predict the probability for a certain number of atomic columns given an experimental image. And more details about the derivation of this map rule can be found in these papers. Here you see the evaluation of the map probability rule, um, predicting that the presence of 63 atomic columns is most likely. And the corresponding refined model here clearly shows the expected graphene lattice without using prior knowledge concerning the expected atomic structure. Now, much work has been done by team members over the years to implement this parameter estimation algorithm into our open source software, which is called um, Statstem. And this software can be downloaded from this link um, together with a user manual. More details can be found in this ultramicroscopy paper, and we are currently working on a Python version, which we can hopefully release soon. Now, the reason why we compute scattering cross-sections for each atomic column is that they are, they are robust to many imaging parameters, such as the focus. In addition, they are more sensitive for the number of atoms as compared to peak intensities. And here you see the increase in peak intensity as well as scattering cross-sections with increasing number of platinum atoms in a column. And whereas peak intensities level off quickly as a function of thickness, scattering cross-sections increase up to much larger thicknesses. Now, in order to understand this behavior, we simulated how the electron wave function propagates as a function of thickness. If the probe is located at the center of a column, then you see that this column will be excited up to a thickness of only six atoms, after which the probe disperses. And this explains this leveling off of peak intensities. However, for off-column positions, the electrons interact with the atomic column at other depths. And if we now add all intensities contributing to the scattering cross-sections, this increasing trend with increasing number of atoms becomes clear. Now, the estimated scattering cross-sections can now be used for atom counting. And the most straightforward manner is to directly compare them with simulated scattering cross-sections as a function of thickness. Here you see a library of simulated scattering cross-sections as a function of the number of gold atoms. And this can be used to assign the number of atoms for each atomic column for this gold nanorod. Now, generating these library values can be very time-consuming. And therefore, um, Ivan Lobato um, trained a convolutional neural network that can be used to predict scattering cross-sections as a function of the number of atoms for a given atomic number, acceleration voltage, probe convergence angle, inner and outer detector angle, and also other parameters. For the training, um, we used frozen formal multi-slice simulations using the open source Multem software. And this has been done for a wide range of microscope parameters and for a specific set of FCC crystals so far. In particular, more than four and a half million training images have been used to train this network. And here you see um, some examples where the curves shown in red um, represent the ground road scattering cross-sections for different crystals and microscope settings.
Obviously, these results were not part of the training dataset. The match with the predicted scattering cross-sections shown in blue therefore demonstrate the validity of this neural network. Now, an alternative for atom counting is to make use of a statistics-based method, which we have developed. And here you see um, the same image of this gold nanorod. In the first step, we estimate the scattering cross-sections, which are here shown in the form of a histogram. In the next step, the distribution of scattering cross-sections of all atomic columns is decomposed into overlapping um, normal distributions as illustrated here. And for this, we use a so-called Gaussian mixture model analysis in combination with the use of an order selection criterion. And this criterion allows us to determine the number of statistically significant components present in the underlying cross-section measurements. The number of components corresponds to a minimum in the evaluation of this criterion as a function of the number of components. And often this corresponds to a local minimum. In this example, we find the presence of 47 components, suggesting that the number of gold atoms varies from 1 up to a maximum of 47 atoms in this example. Now, all columns whose um, scattering cross-sections correspond to the first component are assigned one atom. If they correspond to the second component, two atoms are assigned, and so on. And in this manner, we also obtain a map reflecting the number of atoms for each atomic column. Now, it becomes interesting to compare the consistency of the statistics and simulation-based results. And therefore, we can plot the location of the components corresponding to the mean scattering cross-sections as a function of the number of atoms to obtain this figure here. Now, the result of the previous slides is shown here by means of the black dots. And this can now be compared with the scattering cross-sections resulting from image simulations shown in red. And the excellent match validates the accuracy of the results. Now, the precision is set by the overlap um, between um, neighboring Gaussian components in the mixture model. And here we conclude um, that there is a probability of 20% to miscount the number of atoms with one atom, and that there is a probability of 80% to correctly assign the number of atoms. So this shows the present state of the art for particles consisting of a single type of element. However, in many applications, the goal is to unscramble mixed elements in heterogeneous particles. So also here, atom counting can be very helpful in order to get insight in the 3D atomic structure. But in this case, a very large number of simulations may be needed, which significantly increases the complexity of this approach. And the reason for this is that small changes um, in the atom ordering in the column can already modify the scattering sections. Therefore, image simulations of all possible um, 3D configurations would be required. And in case of a 20 atom stick binary alloy, already more than 1 million simulations would be needed, which becomes an impossible task in terms of computing time. And therefore, we developed an electron channeling based prediction model in which the lensing effect of scattering cross sections is modeled as a superposition of individual atoms focusing the incoming electrons. And this model allows us to predict scattering cross-sections of any mixed um, column based on um, simulations of the pure columns. And in this manner, the number of required simulations is drastically reduced to only two for a binary column. 
Now, in combination with statistical parameter estimation methods and prior knowledge concerning the shape of the nanorod, the lensing model could be used to count the number of silver and gold atoms in each atomic column for the silver-gold um, core shell nanorod. So this example shows that when using stem scattering cross-sections only, prior knowledge um, should be included since scattering cross-sections depend both on thickness and on compositions. And one of the questions that we are nowadays working on is to see if we can avoid prior knowledge when including independent measures resulting from EDX stem. Now, in a similar manner as for stem imaging, we can determine EDX stem scattering cross-sections using full multi-slice simulations. And in this graph, the normalized ADF stem scattering cross-sections are shown as a function of the normalized EDX um, scattering cross-sections for different inner and outer ADF detector angles. And it is clear that a linear scaling exists between the two types of scattering cross-sections if the signal becomes more incoherent. And this linear relation can also be confirmed from theory and experimental datasets. Now, the use of EDX and HADF stem in combination with the prediction models to theoretically compute scattering cross-sections can now be used to count the number of atoms for heterogeneous nanomaterials. And therefore, we developed an iterative weighted least squares minimization to match experimental scattering cross-sections with simulated values. And this is here demonstrated for a silver gold, um, gold nanorod. Now, the EDX mapping was done um, for 16 minutes and the results have been stored every 5 minutes, followed by the acquisition of a calibrated HADF stem image. Next, scattering cross-sections have been measured over time for both the stem images and the silver and gold EDX maps. And those scattering cross-sections have been averaged over time in order to get mean values together with a measure for their precision. And then next, the iterative weighted least squares minimization algorithm has been used to obtain the number of silver and gold atoms for each atomic column without um, prior knowledge. And more results can be found in this recently published work in small methods. Now, from the atom count, the goal is next um, to obtain the 3D atomic structure from a single viewing direction, as this is highly beneficial to reconstruct beam sensitive material or to follow the dynamics of nanoparticles in situ. Now, back in 2011, we were able to obtain an atomically resolved 3D reconstruction of a silver particle embedded in an aluminum matrix. And to achieve these um, results, we acquired high resolution ADF stem images from which we counted the number of silver atoms in each atomic column. And this procedure has been repeated from an extra viewing direction. And by combining atom counting results of the same particle from those two viewing directions, we could determine the 3D structure using discrete tomography. Our goal is to go even one step further to obtain a reliable 3D atomic structure from a single viewing direction. And this is highly beneficial to reconstruct beam sensitive materials or to follow the dynamics. And therefore, we first count the number of atoms in each atomic column. And next, an initial 3D atomic model is built based on the atom counting results by placing the atom columns symmetrically around a central plane and by using prior knowledge about the crystal structure. Next, this model is fully relaxed using App Initio calculations, a Monte Carlo approach, or molecular dynamics um, simulations to minimize the total energy of the structure. 
This methodology was used to study the dynamical behavior of germanium clusters, a catalytic platinum nanoparticle, the 3D atomic structure of connected lead selenide quantum dots, and 3D structural changes of a gold nanodumbbell upon heating. Now, obviously, the question arises, how reliable is this 3D atomic structure resulting from just a single 2D image? And to investigate this, we reconstructed a platinum nanoparticle by combining atom counting and energy minimization using molecular dynamics simulations. And these results have been compared to the outcome when using atomic resolution tomography. And when comparing both reconstruction techniques, one observes a close match. Moreover, when comparing atom counts from both methods through different slices, there is an excellent agreement um, demonstrating that even single image acquisitions enable us to retrieve a rather complete 3D picture of the underlying atomic structure. Now, for the energy minimization step, two different approaches can be distinguished. In a Monte Carlo approach, the energy is minimized by shifting the atomic columns up and down while keeping the number of atoms fixed to the outcome of the atom counting procedure. The second approach consists of a full molecular dynamic simulation to relax um, the particle structure. Now, where the first approach is in fact too strict by ignoring the finite atom counting precision, the second method runs the risk of ending up in a global energy minimum and violating the physical constraints of the experimental observations. And therefore, a new method um, was recently proposed, which includes the finite atom counting precision and neighbor mass relations via a Bayesian genetic algorithm um, to further improve the 3D atomic models. Now, the statistical uncertainty on the atom counting results can be visualized in the form of a probability matrix, representing the probability for each atomic column to have a specific number of atoms. And this is here demonstrated for a simulated platinum nanoparticle at two different um, doses. If the dose is reduced, um, the uncertainty becomes larger. And this can be um, included as prior knowledge in the reconstruction algorithm. Now, to increase um, the quality of low-dose reconstructions, we can include even more prior knowledge during the reconstruction and include neighbor mass relations in the algorithm. Abrupt discontinuities are indeed highly non-physical for small nanoparticles. And the neighbor mass matrix helps to predict the column mass based on the average mass of the neighboring columns. Here we propose a diagonal neighbor matrix. The probability profile is a Gaussian and the width is chosen such that the interval plus minus one and zero atoms contains 80% of the probability. Um, we then use a genetic algorithm for reconstructing the 3D atomic structure. And these types of algorithms are powerful tools for solving large optimization problems where finding a direct solution is not possible. The um, evolution starts from a population of randomly generated individuals. And in each iteration or generation, the fitness of every individual in the population is evaluated by the cost function of the optimization problem. The more fit um, individuals are selected and a new generation is formed by recombining and mutating the selected individuals. The new generation of candidate solutions is then used in the next iteration of the algorithm. And the 
prior knowledge is inserted in the cost function. And this is done in the form of our probability matrices for the finite atom counting precision and neighbor mass relations. And this makes um, this algorithm a Bayesian genetic algorithm. We applied this uh, Bayesian genetic algorithm to 13 noise re realizations for different noise levels and evaluated the fraction of surface atoms that are correctly identified in three dimensions for this simulated platinum nanoparticle. The surface atoms are most important for catalysis. And here you see the results when reconstructing without prior knowledge and keeping the number of atoms fixed in the atomic column. We see an expected decrease when reducing the electron loads. Now, if we include prior knowledge from the finite atom counting precision or from both finite atom counting precision and neighbor mass relations, we can clearly observe the improved performance at low doses. Now, this methodology of retrieving the 3D atomic structure from a single image opens up new prospects for analyzing in situ experiments and to track changes over time. Now, here you see the 3D reconstruction of a platinum nanoparticle in vacuum, but more interestingly, we can now follow changes of such particles under the flow of selected gases, hydrogen, and oxygen in this example. And we switch the gas flow once more, and this enables us to quantify refaceting of platinum nanoparticles with atomic resolution during various cycles. In this example, we obtained the 3D atomic structure by analyzing the underlying images frame by frame. One of the challenges now is to investigate if we can enhance the reliability um, in the results by modeling the dynamics between successive frames using a so-called hidden Markov model. And this um, hidden Markov model depends on a set of parameters, including initial probabilities, which define the probability for a column to have a specific number of atoms in a column. In this simplified example, the probability to have one atom is twice as large as compared to the probability to have two or three atoms in a column. Now, the number of atoms in a column are the so-called um, hidden states, which we cannot measure directly. We observe them indirectly through the um, scattering cross-sections obtained from ADF stem images. And the emission probability defines the probability of the scattering cross-sections. Given a certain number of atoms in a column, and this is described by a normal distribution function. And from this, we see that for one time step, the hidden Markov model is in fact equal to the Gaussian mixture model introduced in the statistics-based atom counting procedure. Now, instead of analyzing um, a time series of images frame by frame, we will now also estimate transition probabilities, which in a sense model the dynamics of the nanoparticle. It defines probabilities for a given column um, of atoms to, for example, lose or gain an atom. Now, assumptions of the hidden Markov model are that transition probabilities do not change over time and that the next state only depends on the previous state, but not on the states before that. Now, using a maximum likelihood estimation algorithm, the initial um, emission and transition probabilities are estimated. And in the next step, a so-called Viterbi algorithm is um, used to indicate the most likely state sequence. Using simulations of a hypothetical platinum nanoparticle, which is changing over time, we investigated the performance of the hidden Markov model as a function of electron loads. And the percentage 
of correctly assigned atom counts is represented when using um, the hidden Markov model in blue or when using a traditional frame-by-frame -frame analysis, which is shown here in red. And you can clearly see the benefits of the new method. Now here we applied um, the method to an experimental time series of images of a platinum catalyst nanoparticle using the hidden Markov model. So here you see how the number of atoms uh, changes over time. These atom counts have been used as an input um, for the Bayesian genetic algorithm to get a reliable 3D quantification of structural changes under the electron beam. And although each image has unique noise and that the structure is moving under the electron beam, we can conclude that the number of atoms with the same coordination number is consistent over time. Therefore, the small changes clearly do not change the overall catalysis relevant information that we can extract. And finally, we investigated a time series of supported cold nanoparticles deposited on cerium dioxide at 400 degrees Celsius. Using the hidden Markov model, we could obtain atom counts, and they have been used as an input for 3D modeling, visualizing the process where an entire 100 plane disappears and reappears. And the 3D models show that this layer jumping is accompanied by a significant change in the surface structure and size. And with this last example, I come to the conclusions of my talk, in which I've shown how quantitative STEM can be used to count the number of atoms with single atom sensitivity, how to unscramble mixtures of elements, how to obtain the 3D atomic structure based on atom counts from a single viewing direction, and how to track um, the 3D dynamics using hidden Markov models. Finally, I would like to thank the entire EMA team in Antwerp. And I would very much like to thank all collaborators involved in the different research topics shown in this presentation. I would like to thank the funding agencies. And of course, I would like to thank you for listening.